on the fence you can see the uh, keep HSR out of Acton the high-speed rail okay we're coming to the um, June 6th meeting here at High Desert and they've got a packed crowd the bond the bond measure that was passed in 2008 was not just for the high speed rail system but it was also for this whole this statewide program um, we're investing in Metrolink we're investing in helping Metro improve their light rail system because we know that a high speed rail system by itself um, is, would not be successful unless we improve the other transportation systems so that um, people can ride a, a Metrolink train or ride the BART or ride a Caltrain to get to um, the high speed rail station and they, and they can and they can get off the high speed train and get a light rail to get to their final destination. So that's all part of the system. Um, and it's all part of the, the state of California keeping, keeping the transportation system um, uh, for what we need in the future um, to, to support the economy of the state. Um, you see the bullet there that California is the seventh largest economy in the state. Uh, in 2013, we were 10th. So just between 2013 and today, we've gone from 10th to 7th. So the economy, the economy is growing. Um, and we know even through um, the, the downturn we've had over the last you know, seven years, the population continues to grow. Um, and this has been the case you know, as, long as, we all, as long as we've been, all been around. You know, people keep coming to the state, and, and this time, it just it's not, it doesn't seem to be abating. And so we, we have to plan for that, um, and, and this is part of that um, system, to plan for that population growth and to plan for connecting people throughout the state. Um, and so part of why we need this transportation, this, this, uh, improve our transportation system is to address congestion. Um, if you... You know, I know up here we're a little bit um, separated from, you know, the L.A., the more urban areas. But we know in all the urban areas in the state, the highways are very, very congested. Um, one thing that folks may not realize, um, in addition to what's on the slide, is our rails are congested. In most of the state, we share tracks, passenger tracks, with freight. So the Metrolink line that goes down to L.A., through the San Fernando Valley and through Santa Clarita, it's one single track in most places, and we, and that track is shared by the Metrolink tra passenger trains and by freight trains. And so, some parts of the state, this, this, it's actually very congested, and it actually impacts how many more uh, passenger trains we can have, or it it, could, it affects the travel time. Um, a lot of times, passenger trains have to wait for the freight trains to go by. So, a lot of these trains are train trips are very, very long, uh, because we, you know, like I said, in some places we have a single track. So. So we're, we're, this system is planning two new electrified tracks throughout the state. So this is actually very important to, to, to consider. Um, the, in addition to the highways and the rails, our air, air corridors are very congested. The, the air market between LA area and San Francisco area is very congested. Um, it's the most congested short haul market in the United States. Um, the runway, the uh, terminals and the runways have a, a limited capacity. If you go to LAX, you see those planes, they're flying up every you know, 30 seconds, the plane takes off. At some point, we can't add any more flights. So, um, and, we, and, and the Bay Area is the same thing. In San Francisco, they actually have a lot of constraints because of weather. And the runways are too close together, so when there's limited visibility, they can only run one, run, one, one, run, run, one runway at a time. Well, oh, that's a time twister. Um, anyway, so, so that's, that's part of, high-speed rail is another choice. It's another mode to help relieve that congestion. And you see the, the, the statistic about the population growth, the one I talked about earlier. Right now we're at 38 million people. So we're expecting another 12 million people by 2050. Um, that's the um, equivalent to the, the population of the state of Ohio. So that we have to plan for those, that, that population growth in the state. And we know we can't keep adding, as I talked about, you know, we can't build more airports and we can't keep adding highway, uh, more highway lanes to the, to the, to the, to the freeway system. We also need to deal with the, um, the effects of what, of what highways and planes do to our air quality. Um, the the, tr the high-speed train is all electric, so it won't be em emitting greenhouse gases. And, and I think that's an important thing in some areas of our, um, of, of our more urban uh, cities. You know, we have a lot of kids that are growing up with asthma. 
high incidence of asthma because they live near freeways. Um, so adding more freeways is, 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 will only make that problem worse. So this is a map of the statewide system. Um, and you see the, the information there. Uh, in 2005, there was a program document that, that adopted the, the high-speed rail program. Um, bond, bond funds were approved by voters in 2008 to start the project. Um, and what we're talking about is an 800-mile system that connects the major cities in the state. What you see there in dark blue is the um, phase one system that will go from San Francisco to Anaheim. And that's what we're working on right now is that phase one system. And then in the yellow um, on the north end, going up to Sacramento and on the south end going to San Diego. That's our phase two system uh, that we will uh, plan for after we're complete with the phase one system. The other thing you see there is uh, near Palmdale, you see a dotted line moving to the, to the, to the east and then a, a light blue line that goes to Las Vegas. So those are two other projects of note. Um, the light blue line is a, uh, a train from Victorville to Las Vegas that is being planned by a private company right now called um, uh, Express West. And um, they have an environmental document approved, and they're planning a system from Victorville to Vegas. Um, LA Metro is planning a, a connection, a highway and a, a high-speed rail connection between Victorville and Palmdale. So what that, what that would allow us to do in the future is connect um, all those lines together to have a, uh, a hub in Palmdale where you can ride trains to San Francisco or trains to Vegas. So that's, that's something that's an exciting thing for um, people in the, in the, not just in the state of California, but in the, in the greater Southwest US. So in order to plan the system, um, you know, we have to take into many things into consideration. Um, and it's a collaborative effort. It's an effort that we work with, with agencies and communities, um, represented by the, the diagram you see here. So in the, in the yellow, on the, the yellow circle on the lower left, is the project objectives. Um, so we want the train to go over 200 miles an hour. Uh, we want it to be safe. We want it to uh, meet the ridership goals. So those are the objectives of the project. Um, to, on the green circle in the lower right are, are environmental resources represented by our environmental agencies that, um, that, want to, that their goal is to protect the environment, um, protect critical habitat areas, uh, uh, protecting waters, the waters, our, our waters and our streams. So that, that's the, that's the uh, um, area that, that represented by that circle. And then at the top you see here the, the blue circle, which is the community. Um, and that's represented by, by you, by communities, um, that we need to protect the communities as well. So the best project, um, the project that we're working towards, will be the project in the middle that, that meets the, the, the goals and objectives of all three, um, and a lot of times, you know, sometimes those three things can be, you know, they can be maybe uh, competing, sometimes they can be uh, in agreement, but the best project is one that, that meets the needs of all three. So, um, as we've gone through the process, um, and, you know, definitely the, the folks here in Acton are, are familiar with this, the project has, has evolved, and what you see here is that evolution of the um, project. Um, starting from, from left to right, you see the, how the map has changed. In, um, in 2010, we did our preliminary alternatives analysis. And that was our first, you know, first attempt at developing routes. And you actually see here in Acton, we had two routes. Excuse me, I'm going to get some water. Um, through the, uh, oh, sorry. Through 2012 and 2014, You've seen changes in the, the routes here in Acton, and, and there's been some other changes as well, but, I, but just because you're familiar with this area. Um, these are the different alternatives analysis that we've done as, as we do more studies, as we do more um, meet with environmental agencies, as we meet more with the communities, we, we get more information, uh, we do more studies, and so the routes change, and you see the change through there. We had three routes here. We, we, then we had two, then the two, we had two again, they were different. And now we have just the one line here. Um, we also introduced new routes early in 2014 that you see here. And these have evolved even in that time, and that's the map that we have now. And so this is our current route, our current map. And just, uh, uh, just a reminder, 
on, on the, the legend, the purple lines you see here um, it represents sections that are underground in tunnel, for example. Um, the green lines, you know, you see here the green line, is where it's at the surface. And then the blue lines, uh, you see a blue piece here, is where it's on a bridge or where it's elevated. Uh, so the, the project objective for this section has always been connecting a station to connecting a station in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, most recently, we've settled on it being in Burbank. So this is, this is the objective right now, is connecting stations from Palm Little Burbank. And this map actually highlights that evolution that we've done even since recent, recently. In December, we showed these gray lines that you see here um, in the map in December. And since December, we had, we had a community meetings in an open house here in December. We've had some community working groups. We've met with agencies. We've done more studies. We've had field studies, all, all sorts of things. So it, it, even in that time, we've evolved the routes. And, and what you see here is now we only have one line here. Um, we have a little bit of change here as well and some other changes. So, so the route, the map now is the one that you, you see here. Just to be clear, this is where we are right now. Um, through the process, the maps, the routes will continue to evolve, and that's something that we would expect would happen. As we get more information, as we do more field studies, and get more data, um, you know, some of these routes may be changed and refined. And how we do that is through the environmental process. Um, and so this is, summarizes uh, graphically what that process is, what you see here. Um, that 2005 program document that was for the entire state system was done there. And then as we've done each section, we've, we've gone through scoping and, and uh, started the analysis for each section. Uh, here in Palmdale to LA, the scoping was done in 2007. And then we did that series of alternative analysis that I showed earlier in 2010, 2012, 2014. And now we're at the, you know, current alternative analysis that you, that were that were um, that's now actually been posted on our website. That we're here that shows the routes that we have now. In the bottom, you see the next phase of the project, which is completing the environmental document, um, completing the draft environmental document, which we expect to do um, in in 2016, and then at that time we will release that. We'll have hearings, and then about a year later we'll have a final, and that's when we, the route will be ultimately set up, selected. Throughout this time, we'll have we'll continue to have community meetings um, with the EIR. It's a more formalized process where there's a public hearing, uh, where we, we take public testimony. Every comment that was received gets put into the environmental document. We have to respond to it um, in an appendix. And so that's a much, much more formalized uh, process for public involvement. Um, this is just a, a, high, a summary of what we've been just since in the most recent uh, months since the scoping in the summer. We started the Palm Burbank Division. We've, done, we've continued to develop a range of alternatives and, and done a, a cycle of getting feedback, refining, getting feedback, and, and, and now we've had um, um, the alternatives analysis that, that, we, that we have today. Um, continuing to meet, to look at the three objectives, or the three, the three different components. The objectives of the project, um, feedback from the community, and also feedback it. from the environmental resources. <coughs> in the environmental document, once we get to that phase, um, we will do a, a great number of studies. In the a, in alternative analysis, we do a, a more desktop level, um, generalized um, uh, level of, of, of research um, on, on the alternatives that we're studying. And again, this is for, these are conceptual lines that we look at. Once we get into the environmental document, you see here all the different studies that we do. Um, we, we, we do um, studies on noise and hydrology, um, environmental justice, cultural resources, all sorts of studies get done. And what we do there is we do analysis. What is the impact? What is the potential impact of each route that we're considering? And also, what is the potential mitigation for that potential um, uh, impact to that, to that, to that feature? So the, all of, every one of these studies gets its own study, uh, and that all will be available in the environment document and get, can get reviewed. They get reviewed by the environmental agencies. So um, that's the process, and now Hannah will talk, talk, talk about our outreach process. <coughs>
process up to this point in getting um, both the technical team's um, work completed and having that reported back out to our communities and our environmental agencies and the work evolving. Um, it's, it's a process. It's an iterative process and it's something that we are still in the middle of and what we're doing now is just reviewing what we, where we've been over the last year. There's been a series of meetings that um, this community has been very involved with and I would expect would continue since last May today, until today. Um, there's been three rounds of public open house meetings similar to this. We had our public scoping meetings uh, last August, which was a, a more formal step in terms of rescoping this area because we did, at one point it was Palmdale to Los Angeles as a full length of a set of alternatives, and now it is uh, Palmdale to Burbank, so that needed to be officially designated and scoped and communicated to the public. Um, we also held uh, smaller working group meetings um, that this community too was quite involved with. And that really helped the project team um, have more close dialogue about some of the specific issues um, that this community has talked about for a long time and address those issues. I understand that those, that all those issues aren't entirely addressed completely, uh, but it is continuing to be a process. So we will continue with that. Um, as we move forward, during the draft environmental document, we would expect to continue those small work group meetings. Some of the technical studies, like especially the ones that um, are, are more consequential in terms of identifying issues that are, will have an impact on possibly moving the alternatives again, uh, would, be, would come forward sooner than later, a century out. Um, as this state has evolved, since its inception, as this country has evolved since our inception, there has been very big ideas that has shaped and moved uh, our development and our quality of life and our experience for living. We do not want to compromise what it has become our Southern California way of living and each, in fact, each one of our community areas way of living. But here we are at a point in time with the dilemma of how to deal with transportation at a very macro level and bringing it down to make it real and operable for our communities. And there's a number of other very big uh, issues, clearly, that I want to tell this community about that our state is struggling with. Um, but this program is attempting to do its best to bring the best ideas forward that will not only address what we experience today, but for our kids and for our kids' kids going forward. So it is really a multi-generational program that we are trying to do our best today to plan and program. 